From her beginnings on a Navy drawing board, through the months of secret field experiments out on the western desert, then through the desperate search for new metals with property she needed, she was designed to be man's greatest weapon of the seas, the atom-powered submarine. Her engines were to be a miracle of speed and power. Her sides strong enough to withstand any blow, her armament and firepower of greater force than the worst enemy she might encounter. The mind of man had thought of everything, except that which was beyond his comprehension. I'll take over. Good morning, Captain. Had breakfast? Yep. Orange juice, bacon, eggs, coffee. How are we doing? Can't get used to this thing. Just like an automatic elevator. Speed 18, steady on course. Quite a bit of difference between this and the old-fashioned iron lung, huh? Roomy, my gosh. This cutting tower is just like a ballroom. Take it easy, Griff. It's still a submarine. Aye, aye, sir. How about the men? They should complain. All they do is eat, sleep, press a button, and there's some work to be done. How about you, Captain? Satisfied? Yeah, sure. Why shouldn't I be satisfied? Three world records in the bag on a first shakedown cruise? Listen to that music. All we need is some champagne and dancing girls. Shall I have a cheat change the record, sir? Yeah, you better before we start chasing mermaids. All right. Mackinac, something a little more salty, if you please. Salty, sir? Yeah, let's get off this Hawaiian kick. It's even demoralizing the captain. Aye, aye, sir. Hey. Her ten. Oh. What's going on? Yeah, what? What's a big bag? There's another beat from the sonar equipment, sir. Target, bearing 180, range 1500. Nothing back there. Sonar still picks it up, Captain. Barry. It's dead astern. Submerged about as deep as we are. Looks like it could be following us. Whales sometimes get playful out here in the Pacific. The scan's bigger than a whale. Another sub? Even bigger than a sub. It's closing in on us, Captain. You better take a look at this. Conning tower to control. Left, 20 degrees, rudder. New course, 300. Zero, zero. Left, 20 degrees, rudder. New course, 300. Zero, zero. Rudder is 20 degrees left, sir. What would you call that? 
Probably a short circuit in our sonar system showing up as an echo. Check it. I just did, Captain. It's working all right. Shall I check it again, sir? Never mind. It's really gaining on us, whatever it is. Getting closer, huh? It's close as 500 yards. Conning tower to maneuvering. All ahead, flank. All ahead, flank, sir. Get those atoms of Pope. Give me everything you got. Aye, aye, sir. You losing it? No, sir. You just gained another 200 on us. Give me a sonar image. I want to see what this thing looks like. Griff, man battle station. Man battle stations. Man battle station. Man battle station. Man battle station. Man battle station. Go to control and take the con. On a zigzag course, the usual escape pattern. I see. Now let's see what you got here. What do you call that? It's no whale, sir, that's for sure. It's no ship either. Let me check that wiring again. Keep me informed. I'm left. Three five zero. Left to 350. Sonar check's okay, Captain. Bearing 120. Range 500. Can't seem to lose it, Captain. Range 400. What happens when it catches up with us? When you're in command of $55 million worth of submarine, you don't gamble. Range 300. Stand by to take her deep. Aye, uh, sir. Range two double O. Take her deep. Full dive in the bow plane, please. Full dive in the bow plane, sir. Ten degrees down bubble. Ten degrees down bubble. Bow plane, you're at full dive, sir. Very well. Resume course. Steer, 330. 330, three, sir. It's too close to get a range now, Carrot of maneuvering, all stop. We're getting a radiation warning signal. Where's it coming from? That's a bomb reactor, sir. It must be. Recheck your reactor. Reactor shield okay. Engine's okay. Nothing hot in here, sir. What happened to us? I don't know. All you men okay? Okay, but let's find out where that radiation's coming from before we're all fly. It's coming from outside the ship. Look. I don't figure it. I can't either, sir. I haven't got time to try now. Our sonar system's out. Fix it. Maneuvering. Let's pull out of here. All ahead, pull. All ahead, pull, sir. But we're standing still. That's not the engine's fault, sir. Keep pouring it on. You okay, Griff? Okay, here, sir. Surface! Here's the blast is loose. Get in your gear and stand by the escape hatch. Take a demolition charge. I'll take over. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh. Anybody hurt? Mac took an awful crack in the head here, Captain. Come on, Mac. How do you feel, Mac? All right. What's a fractured skull anyway? Is that damn thing still going? Not afraid of a little radiation, are you, Mac? I've heard it make you so he can't have children, sir. Mac was married just before we left port, Captain. Congratulations, Mac. 
Thanks, Captain. We're counting on the family, sir. We won't hang around out here any longer if we can help it. Volunteers are heading out, sir. Tell me that thing. I'm going to rig in the biodiving plane to see if that'll free us. If it won't, just cross your fingers. Rig in biodiving planes. Aye, sir. That's doing it. Full rise on the stern planes. Full rise on the stern planes, aye. We're loose, Captain. Speed's increasing. We're coming up, sir. That's a relief. Stand by the surface. Stand by the surface, aye. Sir. What's in your mind, Griff? Stern planes have filed. Show signs of radioactivity. Tell those swimmers to stay clear. I did, sir. What'd you find down there? A chunk of stuff caught in a... Stern diving plane, sir. What kind of stuff? Rubber-like, Captain. What did it look like? We didn't get too close. Of course, what the exec said about the radioactivity. Looked more like a fish to me. It was more like a barrel. Barrel? Yes, sir. I believe it's stuck there till we get into dry dock. She's jammed solid, sir. All right, you men go below and get yourself some coffee. All right, sir. Aye. Yes, sir. your guess, Griff? Just going to ask you, sir. Privately? Privately? I'm keeping my mouth shut, and I'm advising you to do the same. The next time I cruise in these waters, I'm going to have torpedoes on board and warheads on them. How about officially? Officially? Shakedown cruise completed X-ray, struck submerged object, X-ray, damaged miner, putting into pearl for repairs. Have it coded and passed on to operation. Aye, sir. Just hope that that's the end of it. But that was only the beginning. When Commander Matthews brought the atomic submarine into Pearl Harbor for repairs, the Defense Department found itself confronted with a problem beyond the scope of Navy manuals. What was the nature of that nameless substance found caught in the damaged diving planes? A substance so strange, so inexplicable and alarming that the best minds in the nation had to be called upon to solve the problem. Behind the guarded door, where the secret lay hidden, and for the first time in their lives, three people met. Couldn't be a mistake. You think so, Professor? It's tissue, all right. Where'd it come from? Some living creature? You mean all that hunk came from one living creature? That's right. You mean that's not all one animal, there's more to it? A great deal more. Well, it'd be dead now, wouldn't it? I doubt it. Must be pretty big. Enormous. Doctor, what kind of a sea beast would be that large? What do you call it so I can stop calling it it? I have no idea. No, have I. Well, how do we find out? That will take time and research. I'll wire the university right away to get a leave of absence. The Navy will take care of that, Doctor. You can get started immediately. How about you, Professor? Working with Dr. Carter is every marine biologist dream, but my school needs me. You can get along without me, I'm sure.
Can we, Doctor? No. Forgive my ignorance, Doctor, but what makes her so unique? Professor Joyce is head of marine biology at the Southeastern Institute of Oceanography. I would say she's probably the outstanding authority on marine biology, with the possible exception of Vanderhume himself. Then we'll get him. Before you start looking, I may as well tell you, Vanderhume is dead. Professor Joyce. Yes? I'll have to ask you to stick around. Why, Commander? Because of the... The Navy would appreciate it. I'm sure the Navy's able to get along without me. Well, now, Dr. Carter seems to think otherwise. Dr. Carter's perfectly able to speak for himself. Uh, I'm speaking for him. I'm expected at a Board of Regents meeting on Tuesday. It's about the appropriations for our coming academic year. Are those appropriations that important? To my school, very much so. You know, Professor Joyce, this thing that may be running loose in the Pacific, that could be important too. I'm sure of it. Perhaps not in the way you think. I'm a scientist, Commander. I don't have to be reminded that your objectives are not necessarily my own. Our objectives have nothing to do with the situation, Miss Joyce. The Navy will see to it that you're not penalized for your absence from the Institute. Arrangements will be made. Well, I feel like I'm being drafted. You are. It was still too early for the world to know what was going on behind that closed door. Only a handful of men in high places heard reports of progress made and waited impatiently for the final conclusion. Matthew speaking. Oh, yes, Admiral. Well, hold on a minute, sir. They're still making tests, sir. There's nothing really conclusive to tell you. I'll call you the minute anything happens. Yes, sir. Good night, sir. During 12 days and nights, nothing was certain. You people work hard. It's our job. I didn't realize how hard. What are you trying to do, apologize? In a way. It's not necessary. I think it is. Let me explain something to you. A, I have been privileged to classify an unknown sea specimen. B, I have the honor of working with the great John Carter of Harvard, the inventor of analytical biology. And C, my mind just isn't attuned to discuss things on your level, Commander. I don't think you're being entirely fair, Miss Joyce. Look, I have been working for almost two weeks now without a decent night's sleep. I'm tired. I read your book on marine biology and your plankton theory and tracing surface currents. Strictly in the line of duty, of course. I'm sorry, Commander. Well, I'll tell you. I'll forgive you if you call me Pete. All right, Pete. But you have to let me get back to my work. Why don't you take a break? I have a reason. The Navy always has a reason. That's right. All right, maybe you're right. Uh, tell me, he's a pretty nice guy, isn't he? He's wonderful. And you're pretty fond of him, aren't you? Fond? Why, he's magnificent. He's a brilliant scientist. His techniques are creative. What are you driving at? Oh, I, uh, just thought I'd clear the atmosphere. Oh, you mean romance. <laughs> now you tell me something, Commander. Pete. All right. Pete. When you're driving that atomic submarine of yours, do you have much time for romance? <laughs> well, even if I did admit I had the time, where would I find the opportunity? You know, women aren't allowed aboard a submarine. Poor boy. I thought the Navy was uh, equipped for every emergency. Uh, for the record, are you tied up? I see what you mean. That mean you're not? Girl has to have some secrets, doesn't she?
you have the results of the iodide solution? What? What's the matter, Leslie? Don't you feel well? Well, uh, I don't know. I guess it's just lack of sleep. You better get some rest. No. No, I'll, I'll be all right. Um, here are your results. On the evening of the 13th day, Dr. Leslie Joyce was taking the results of her last test. John. John, I think you better take a look at this. What's going on? There's no doubt about it now. No doubt about what? Thanks to Professor Joyce, we've discovered the nature of your monster. What a gal. Oh, John. Naval Intelligence. Admiral Burns, please. Well, Admiral, it's happened. Carter and Joyce have got news for you. Yes, sir. Very well, sir, I'll tell them. An Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Mr. Robert David Chase, is coming out here. And Admiral Norman wants to be in on it, too. He's the commander-in-chief of the entire Pacific area. He'll see us the first thing in the morning. Here, gentlemen, is your villa. It would take an enormous number of those to disable a Navy submarine. Or just one of enormous size, Mr. Chase. There's a squid on exhibit in the American Museum of Natural History, just under 100 feet in length. It came from the waters off the coast of Maine. Our Navy has never encountered one of those marine monsters before. How do you account for that? They only live at the extreme depths of the sea, Admiral. They almost never come up unless they're disturbed. Disturbed? By what? Hydrogen bombs. H-bombs have been blamed for every freak accident that's happened since, up to and including marine monsters being disturbed. Not disturbed, Mr. Chase. Hungry. Six days ago, we gave this fellow here a radioactive meal. Not a fatal dose, however. Now, here is what he likes best. His regular diet of small fish. Now, watch. Ordinarily, cephalopods are not timid about catching a good meal. This fellow seems to be having difficulty, however. Why? We checked our answer with Professor Emoto in Tokyo. He concurs. Certain species of fish seem to be gifted with their own natural Geiger counter. So the giant fish's dinner knows when it's coming and swims away? In that case, he'd starve to death very quickly. Unless he finds some other creature to live on. Uh, what creature, for instance? Some higher form of life, animals possibly, or even man. Uh, gentlemen, let's put together a hypothesis from what we know. In this area lie the Marshall Islands, where the H-bomb experiments took place. Wind and north equatorial current account for a drift of radioactivity in this direction, contaminating marine life on the way. Here lies the great Mindanao Deep chasm in the floor of the ocean so vast it has never been explored. This is where our monster must have lived. Till recently, when he became radioactive and began to warn his natural prey out of the surrounding waters. He had to find other food or die. Forced to rise to the surface, he hunted along the Japanese current. There is evidence that he was swept in this direction. What evidence? You may have read it yourself in the papers. About a month ago, part of the Japanese fishing fleet disappeared in these waters without a trace. Siberian seal fishing has been reported unaccountably bad. But the Japanese fishermen may have gone down in a typhoon. Who knows what's really happening in Siberia? There was an encounter here with Commander Matthew's submarine. Or are you going to question that as well? 
I have to question all of it. Perhaps Professor Joyce has another opinion to advance. No, I'm afraid not. We've had too little sleep in the last few days. If there's anything further you want to discuss, let uh, me know. That it. won't be necessary, thank you. You've given us enough to think of as it is. Before you go, do you mind giving us your reaction to our findings? That will be taken under advisement. Mr. Secretary. It's uh, been very enlightening. Thank you for all you've done. Good night. Good, Good night, night, sir. Well, that's letting us down easy. No, you're just, just tired. So what? So I'm tired. They didn't even believe us. Well, they have to be cautious. Of course, we understand. Does that mean that we're free to go now? Just as soon as your release comes through, just a few days. John, you can make the Science Congress. Mm -hmm. If you play your cards right, I can meet you in Cairo. <laughs> I was never very much good at playing cards. I'm awfully tired. I think I'll go to the hotel now. We can all go over together. All right, I'll just change. She's a wonderful girl. Sure is. And you are a lucky man. Lucky? Don't we make our own luck, Commander? Well, it isn't everyone that can uh, vacation in Egypt. Vacation? Oh, no. Leslie and I have published contrary viewpoints on the sinking nature of the coast of the Red Sea. We're going to investigate via Aqualung. The loser is going to publish a retraction. Sounds ideal. Nothing like mixing pleasure with work, huh? Work? Oh, yes, that is your work, isn't it? Well, I'm ready. Fine. Well, good night. He's an interesting man. Isn't he? our position. of him to throw this going away party for us. Probably comes off of his expense account. Oh, you sound bitter. Well, if he's giving us a going away party, why isn't he here? He's probably at a meeting of some kind. What's the trouble, Leslie? Oh, I don't know. Just let down, nervous. As nervous as a bride left waiting at the altar. <laughs> don't be a fool. On the contrary, I've been a sober professor for so many years, I feel I'm entitled to one night of foolishness. May I have this dance, Doctor? Do you consider that part of your foolishness? Good evening. I have your transportation passes and releases signed, sealed, and delivered. You'll be leaving in the morning. And believe me, in the Navy, that takes some doing. Thanks, Pete. You've been swell about everything. Well, he's probably glad to get rid of us. I'm glad you didn't wait. I'll have the same. Oh, and if a waiter happens to wander by, would you order me a T-bone rare and some humble red wine? Mm hmm Where are you going? We, my dear doctor, are going to dance. With your permission, sir. Live it up, children. But 
You haven't even asked That's me. the way we do it in the Navy. But I haven't even had my dinner. Would you order another T-bone, Doctor? I don't like T-bones, and you're being a fool. Don't believe her, Pete. She says that to all the boys. You're both being fools. Just because you're men, you think that... Do you like lobster? Yes. Broiled with garlic butter and parsley. Yes. Got it? Got it. It's so balmy here. Is it always like this? Yes. Don't you miss the rain? I like the winter and the snow. Snow's cold. I'm taking an awful chance. What do you mean? You're going to accuse me of being a man. that well in years. I guess your appetite kind of depends upon your state of mind, don't you think? Oh, I've been thinking about a lot of things. About your trip tomorrow, for instance. Isn't it wonderful? You mean you're still leaving? Of course she's leaving. Why shouldn't she? Well, I thought... I, I'm sorry. Hey, what's going on here? It was just something I said and Pete misunderstood. I am sorry, Pete. Do you mind if I make a mental comment upon the nature of women? Excuse me. Pete, please, I... Well, hello. What am I gonna do? Perhaps I could help you if you brief me on the background. He kissed me. Did you enjoy it? Yes. It seems like a normal reaction. He, he didn't even ask me. That's hardly relevant. But I, I don't know him. Who he is? What's he like? Doesn't seem to have the same reservations about you. In any case, my darling, tomorrow we'll be on a plane. And I'm quite convinced that, clinically speaking, no irreparable damage has been done. Sir, you know Professor Joyce and Dr. Carter? Of course I do. Please be seated. Thank you. Admiral Norman's compliments, and will you please come to his office first thing in the morning? He asked me to apologize for rescinding your release. Rescinding it? A tramp steamer, Honolulu bound from Vancouver, has been lost at sea. It's considered possible that there may be some connection between this incident and our problem. Uh, we'll know more definitely if we find any survivors. Area is being searched now. Tell Admiral Norman the Polar Empress survivors are checking in. You boys had a rough time from what I hear. Take a deep breath. I have to check you over. What happened? Grabbed us, that's all. What do you mean it grabbed you? I mean something came up out of the water and grabbed our ship and pulled it under just like that. Another breath, please. Are you kidding me? Why would I be kidding you? Something came up out of the water. Something like uh, what, for instance? Something like, well, like those. Only big, the biggest you ever saw. Ain't I right? They'll tell you. And then another one came up at us and grabbed the ship. And another one. And a whole lot of them, and they dragged it under. Just like I told you. I keep seeing those things coming up at us.
Been drinking? What do you find to drink on a life raft outside of water? A blow on the head, anything like that. I'm all right. Don't you believe me about, about those? Of course I believe you about those. Why shouldn't I? Yost, I want you to go along with this fellow. He's just going to take you down the hall. There's a man there with a white smock just like mine. I want you to tell him all about those. See that he gets to dock. All right, you're next. How about you? Having any trouble with things like this? Who's this dark character? He's one of the staff here. We ain't seen anything like that. You can tell Doc for us, we ain't seen nothing. Oh, I know he's lying as well as you do, but I have to account to Washington. Am I justified in spending a half a million dollars searching the Pacific on the strength of these lies? Bird speaking. Thank you. <clears throat> it's the infirmary. Doc says the patient's as bad as any of these boys. He's recanted his original story, and now he won't say anything else. Can he be released? I think it's my turn now. Tell them to let him go. But not till after I get there. Send it, Paul, please. And uh, don't come back unless I call you. Yes, ma'am. Sure would. Maybe, um, maybe you can tell me where I can find Doc. Doc? Mm -hmm. He's through there, down the hall. Oh. What do you want him for? Oh, well, that's kind of personal. Besides, <laughs> I don't think you'd believe me, even if I told you. I don't believe anything you told me. Sit down. Oh, over here. Well, Kind of funny, but uh, I saw the strangest thing. Well, all I can say is stay away from Doc. Why? He'll make out you're sick, sick in the head. That's ridiculous. Why should he do that? No kidding. That's what he thinks I am. Have you been seeing things? Me, seeing things? Don't be silly. Well, sort of. Tell me what. I'm not telling nobody. Want me to get bounced back at Doc again? What sort of things that you see. I asked you first. Okay. But if you say I said this, I'll say I didn't. You won't believe this, but something happened to a ship I was on. She went down with all hands, except me and a few others. I saw it happen with my own two eyes. Giant octopus. Well, I guess it's up to you now, Admiral. Take whatever steps are necessary. In the weeks which followed, the North Pacific was closed to all shipping. The sea trade between three continents came to a standstill. There was hardly a nation in the world that failed to demand through its government and press the reason for such drastic steps. It was officially announced that the United States Navy was engaged in secret maneuvers, while in reality, the strangest search in history was taking place. Nothing, sir. That's from the State Department, sir, and they want an immediate reply. Thank you. 
Well, let's say we do find your beast. What will you do to it then? That's the next point for us to consider. Torpedoes, if we find your monster on the surface, tap the charges if it's below. And if you miss your first shot? We'll get it with a second. It may not wait for you. The Navy is not entirely incapable of speed, Professor Joyce. We'll chase it. I think you underestimate him, Admiral. The body of the largest cephalopod is like a giant sack, which he can fill with seawater and empty suddenly when he's disturbed or alarmed. Let me show you, Admiral. Now watch. Even the best of your ships are comparatively old-fashioned compared to the cephalopod. He's jet propelled. We'll have to rip him to bits with the first shot. The State Department wants to know how soon we plan to raise our blockade. Australia, Canada, and Peru are protesting to the UN, unless we do it at once. Why don't we come right out and tell them the whole story? Washington makes those decisions, not us. This stays top secret until the thing is definitely sighted and confined to a limited area. How much longer will that take? It should have happened by now. When you start a job like this again, where do you begin? With naval intelligence, I should think. If you mean me, I'm afraid I can't give you a very hopeful send-off. My department has sifted all the information made available to us during the last 10 days. And this is what it boils down to. One, three bathers missing from Australian beaches. Sharks, probably. Anything else? Unusually high waves breaking on Midway. Possible marine disturbance. That's worthwhile investigating. Mm. Uh, it is being at this time. Uh, I'll have the reports within three hours. Marine weather station off the coast of Canada is out of radio contact with land. Anything more? The deep sea fishermen along the northwestern U.S. coast are complaining because of the poor fishing there. And that's all. Any one of these may well be the clue we're seeking. Now, I suggest that we take the one most likely, the weather ship out of touch with land. Can you fly me there? Admiral Burns will have a flight ready for you and accompany you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good luck. May I take the next most likely, the unlucky fisherman in the Northwest? Is that even worth considering? I think so. I can be ready in 10 minutes if you'll have a plane for me. I'll see you. Thank you. Sir, my exec is aboard the submarine. He's perfectly capable of relieving me. I can't spare you to go hunting needles in a haystack, particularly a haystack 3,000 miles in extent. You'll have to stand by, Matthews. That haystack may be a lot smaller than we thought, Matthews. Be on the flight deck in 20 minutes. Yes, sir. the car get turned over? Well, the way we see it, they must have parked the car up the beach a bit. There where it's steep. Yeah. The brakes work loose, roll down, hit this soft sand. Well, where she went? The ignition's still turned on. Hey, don't that beat at all? Nobody ever noticed that. Any reports since then of uh, whales or sea serpents? <laughs> sea, 
seas. <laughs> You mean she wasn't kidding? She wasn't kidding. Pete! <laughs> what would you say made those marks, officer? Why, the beach was covered with those marks a couple of days ago. Commander Matthews to Sheriff Station, over. Sheriff Station, go ahead, Commander, over. Relay this message to the 12th Naval District. Have them notify Dr. John Carter. He got that Carter, that he's wanted here at once. This has top priority, over and out. Fishing. Seems they can't get enough fish in them, too. How's your luck? Not good at all. Say, you mean to tell me the Navy sent you down here in one of those jets just so you could go fishing? That's about it. Uh, hadn't you better tell them I'm here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, by the way, where's that imprint you were telling me about? Down there behind those rocks. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Hello, John. Howdy, Hi, man. John. Any sign of that whale? Still kidding, huh, Commander? <laughs> this is no kidding. Yeah, I know. Uh, flying saucers? No, Bill. Something that came from the sea. And please be careful. Look, Dr. Joyce, don't give me that uh, sea serpent business, huh? <laughs> Look, you just be careful to keep a sharp lookout. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> sea serpent. <laughs> Saves a lot of argument. Well, Doctor? As Leslie probably told you, it's the imprint of a giant octopodal by Dronchiata. Did you get uh, photographs? Yes. I sent them to Admiral Norman. I hope he can believe his eyes. Something must have convinced him because he's setting up headquarters in San Francisco right now. Deputy tells me that fishing's rather poor in these parts. I haven't had a single bite in the last 12 hours. Every sign is positive. It definitely has been here, and it probably hasn't gone away. Maybe you can help me convince her that she ought to beat it and let the Navy take over this job. Beat it? What does she say? What's the difference what she says? Look, Pete, you don't see many women in the seagoing Navy. Are you kidding? Oh, shoreside women, sure. But there's a whole new breed who feel they're just as smart, just as courageous as men. And they are. They don't like to be overprotected. They don't like to have their initiative taken away from them. A, you'd want me to miss the opportunity to see this specimen, one that may never come again. B, you'd be making up my mind for me. And C, I not only don't like being pushed around, but you underestimate my ability to help in a crisis. My sympathies are entirely on her side. Didn't take me very long to lose that argument, did it? of that incident on the Oregon coast reached throughout the world. By order of the Defense Department, shipping took refuge in the harbors and all beach areas were closed. The coastal waters of the Pacific were mined.
from Panama to the Arctic Circle, the western coast of America made ready. I've been asked what the Navy is doing in this emergency. Inasmuch as operational headquarters have been set up here in San Francisco, we will use this area as an example. Offshore minefields, together with radar and sonar warning devices set up on Golden Gate Bridge, should be more than adequate to keep the monster out of the Bay Area. A submarine net has been hung from Golden Gate Bridge itself, completely blocking the only entrance from the sea. Now, this is uh, primarily a warning device, but it's also capable of taking a charge of thousands of volts of electricity, which we've been advised will repel any form of marine life uh, if it doesn't kill it. Now, is there anything I haven't touched on? You say that the monster could attack us in coastal waters and that it's dangerous to human life. What's being done to attack it? Professor Joyce will tell you. Our first problem, of course, is to locate the monster again. We're trying to do that now. Operations to John Carter. Have you seen anything yet? Over. Nothing. It's slow out here. Over. Professor Carter, this is Lieutenant Adams. Where are you? Over. Patrolling coastal waters. Over. What if you don't find anything? Over. We'll find something. We baited the surface out here with dead shark. The beast is bound to come up to eat. We've got several hundred planes watching for it in relay. We'll find it all right. Over. What will you do when that happens? Bomb it from the air? Over. No. We've decided not to. We have good reason to believe that its destruction must be complete and instantaneous. We risk complete failure with a near miss, or if we merely wound it. The monster has only one vulnerable spot, one fatal target, its brain. We're going to try to take advantage of that in a certain way. Will you put Professor Joyce back on? Over. Go ahead, John Carter. Over. Well, Leslie. Take the newsmen down to the San Francisco Navy Yard and show them the weapon. That's all for now. Stand by operations. Over and out. Looks like any other torpedo, though. But it's not. You see, this has no propeller. It's jet propelled. The Navy doesn't quite know what to make of it. Perhaps you'll explain to the boys where you got the idea. I spent all day yesterday at the Siemens Institute, talking to retired whaling men. This is the result. A warhead patterned after a harpoon is encased in the nose. Instead of exploding on contact, it's designed to penetrate and remain fixed in the monster's flesh. By means of spreading bombs. And what's going to destroy the thing? The explosive is sufficient to do that. The difference is that in this case, we set it off electronically. Once we're certain it's dead on its target. Attention on deck! Another thing, Captain, and they want to know if they can go on liberty. I know how bright Market Street looks from here, but we're standing by for orders. Uh, sir. Nobody leaves the yard. Carry on. Engine on deck. I see they picked an atom sub to go out and fight this thing. Why is that, Commander? Could be because of the new electronic equipment, or her speed. Was she ordered back here from Hawaii just for that? That's right. Think it's as bad as that, do you? I think we're lucky she's here. Very lucky. We have records of a monster like this one that appeared in the 13th century. It uh, ravaged the coastal towns of Denmark and Holland. Of course, they didn't have our modern weapons. It was in those waters for over 30 years. Here's another piece of evidence. The monster was disturbed by volcanic eruptions on the floor of the ocean. 
It uh, happened in the same year as the Vesuvius disasters. Gentlemen, I think that's all we have to tell you. Well, we're certainly obliged. Thank you, Commander. Thank you, Elf. We gave you a break. Now you give us one. It all depends on you how the public takes this news. We want them to have all the facts, but we don't want a panic on our hands. Any last questions? Just one. Where did you say the monster came from? From the Mindanao Deep in the Pacific. Are there any more from down there? Probably. How many? I don't know. What do we do about them? I don't know that either. If you don't, then who does? Thank you. I was just wondering, that's all. The 12th Naval District alerted the entire San Francisco area. They were waiting and watching for some sign of the approach of the monster. Electric minefield, contact. Operations wants a check. Radar. Sonar. Radar, sonar. Scope still blank. Let's get a cup of coffee. Come on. Stand by. Sonar signal coming in. Stand by. Sonar signal coming in. Unknown object coming this way. Unknown object coming this way. Wait. Rain 6000. Rain 6000. Moving fast. Moving fast. No position. Entering minefield. Number 40, south. Range, dead on. Fire. 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 Stand by, number 38, mine. Fire. Fire. No luck. Approaching 32, south sector. Approaching 32, Fire. south sector. Fire. Ready, number 31, mine. Radar 31, mine. Fire. Fire. Ready, number 12, south. Fire. Number 12, south. Fire. Ready, number six. Fire. Ready, number six. Fire. It's coming on through. That's the end of our first line of defense, Miss Joyce. Then the red alert. Right. Red alert for Operation Seabees. Get traffic off the Golden Gate Bridge. Red alert for Operation Seabees. Get traffic off the Golden Gate Bridge. Golden Gate Bridge. This is Billings and has contact. Contact with our net. Give me instructions. Over to you, operations. All right, Billings. Let's see what the high voltage can do. Close your switch. not going to be me after all, sir. I might will be at the bridge. Go ahead. Wait a minute. I'm going to go with you. Hello, John. It's struck. Where? Golden Gate Bridge. tell you. Instead of being driven off, it attacked. Maybe it wants to fight.
Navy personnel on the Golden Gate Bridge. You can do nothing more where you are. You're to abandon your post at once and not sacrifice your lives needlessly. These are Captain Stacy's orders. Aye, aye, sir. going on out there? I don't know. I threw the balls into and up she came. When you threw the switch, is it still on? Yes, sir. Where do you think you're going? Out on the bridge. What for? To pull the switch. It's causing the beast Oh, to... no, you're not. Do you want to get killed? Besides, everyone has to be cleared by Captain Stacy, Carter, or Joyce. All right, clear me. I'm Carter. Okay. Okay, clear. <laughs> Good, good evening, friends. This is Sam Hayes. I've got news for you. As you probably know by now, our city has suffered disaster. As a result, a marine monster is at large in this vicinity, perhaps even inside the Bay Area. The federal authorities are doing everything possible to locate it, and together with the city government, are taking every step proper and possible to end this danger. You are advised by the officials in charge to remain in your homes. This beast is dangerously radioactive. Do not cause confusion. Go about your ordinary pursuits. Police officers will advise you if you must move to another place. It will take some time before the congestion on the roads of south along the peninsula can be cleared. Do not take these roads. The Oakland Bay Bridge also is blocked, according to reports coming in. The ferry boats are not running, so stay away from the ferry boats. I repeat, the ferry boats are not running. This would put it approximately here. Have they cleared that area yet? Not yet. The they must. They have a tentative position for it in the bay near the ferry building. This confirms it. We want total and immediate evacuation of the Embarcadero and ferry building area by order of the Commandant 12th Naval District. Go to work on it. Out of the foot of Market Street. 
everybody back. Go west on Market Street. This area is in danger. Everybody leave. This area is in danger. Everybody leave. Submarine is ready at Hunter's Point, sir. As you know, Admiral, I haven't the authority to order a submarine, Captain. Go ahead. You're commissioned to take any steps that seem proper. Aye, aye, sir. You coming, John? Absolutely. We'll get in touch with you as soon as we get aboard. Alert to the Alameda area. On the double, Griff. Take in two. Take in three. Take in the brow. I believe it's actually lifting itself out of the water, Pete. What do we do about that? Pete, get me Leslie. Com 12 is a sea beast. Over. This is Com 12. Over. Hello, Leslie. I'd like to find something that would drive it back underwater. How about heat? Over. I don't know. We can try. Hold it. Ask Captain Stacy to contact the Army for flamethrowers. Over. He's doing it. Tubes forward. Stand by. Forward, How can you torpedo it from here with all those ships in the way? This is a submarine, John. If it can go underwater, it can go under ships, too. This is a deep channel. Better run below if you don't want to get wet. We'll dive. Try to get in close enough for a clear shot. When the sonar picks up the beast, let me know immediately. Sir, we're clear to shipping now. Green. Eight double O. All back full. All back full. All back full. Stand by for a torpedo room. Stand by for a torpedo room. Stand by for a torpedo room. All stop. All stop. All stop, sir. 
We're in too close for my taste, but it can't be helped. Is this after fire our torpedo, run for it, and explode it after we're out of range? Well, let those flamethrowers have a whack at it first. We need a better target. Torpedo! Torpedo get blown apart ourselves, and we think faster than we've ever thought before. I want a man to stand by the escape hatch. Break out an aqua lung and some of that plastic explosive we are issued. I nominate myself if you call for volunteers, sir. This is a personal matter, Griff. I'm reserving that pleasure for myself. Backing full. We'll get a few hours you've got, sir. Very well. Now, second in command, it's my turn to try. No, it's mine. You don't know where the monster is vulnerable. It happens I do. I'm sorry. Well, you want to argue about it or you want to get free right away? And don't waste time. I'll need some explosive and a harpoon gun if you got one. Hampson? Diving suit, harpoon gun, on a dog. Aye, aye, sir. Views. Diver to set for as long as you need. That's all there is to it. <clears throat> Thank you very much.
did. He knew his stuff. It worked. When the range opens up, set off the torpedo. But the cam's still out there, sir. And that other fella, too. I know it. I'm obeying the captain's last orders. You'll do as much for mine. Trace of it. Yes, sir, is. There they are. Get them in sight. Uh -huh. Left full rudder. Starboard ahead two thirds. The Army and the Navy, and our gallant police and fire departments, these have all received the honors they deserve from a grateful city. But there are three others who serve San Francisco who also must not be forgotten. And therefore, a memorial plaque today has been presented to those unsung heroes, the civilian defense volunteers, the crossing guards, and street railway employees of this city. Well, I guess that's it. The subs that ordered our patrol will be on sea duty for a few months. I'll be seeing you, John. Soon, I hope. Will I be seeing you, Leslie? You mean when I get back from Cairo? I mean women can change, move away, get married, have families. Well, there is that possibility, but um, A, there isn't time for that to happen to me. B, I can be reached at the school. And C, how would you like to collaborate with me on a book, How to Catch a Sea Beast? Hey, Doctor, you know you were right about this new breed of woman. 